Welcome everybody to the Genesis Mindset. And in today's episode, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. So I'm actually going to start looking at base chain. I don't know how deep I'm going to go into this. And don't be alarmed if you are a Pulse Chain fan or a Bitmobic fan or an Atropa fan on Pulse Chain. Basically, there is a very strategic reason for this. So Pulse Chain is my core chain and I want it to remain that way. That is the long-term play that I want to be on for many, many years to come. What I'm actually doing here is I'm looking for opportunities outside of Pulse Chain to basically grow my money quickly and get it into Pulse Chain. Now, the reason why I'm doing this now is because the Atropa ecosystem, PDI, everything like this is looking like it's still continuing to go up. It hasn't hit any, hasn't hit all time highs just yet on versus Pulse Chain. So at the minute, it's really just about trying to find opportunities outside of there because I'm not in buying mode within the Pulse Chain ecosystem. I want to wait for things to cool off. So what I'm doing here is actually looking for ways to rotate funds into Pulse Chain. So this is really a play on Ray Dalio's all weather portfolio. So I have started doing some research on base chain and I'm there's a very particular reason why I'm choosing base chain. So with that, let's get into the episode. As always, especially, this is just mindset for investing, trading and life. This is not financial advice. It's personal opinion only. Don't go and buy anything based on what I show you because really, I'm not a technical guy. I'm not someone who, uh, yeah, I'm not a financial advisor. So don't listen to me in that in that regard. So, okay. So what we're looking at is base chain. Is this the new Solana? Could this be the new Solana? And this is all about strategies for growing Pulse Chain. So whatever the strategy is for you, whatever your core bag, whatever your core bag is. Obviously, mine is Pulse Chain. On um, in particular, the Atropa ecosystem. For you, it might be something else. If you're a listener to this from outside of the Pulse Chain ecosystem, I fully support all chains. I have no, I have no biases towards any, but for me, I just like Pulse Chain. So Pulse is my core. And again, this is about this concept that Pulse Chain moves last. We looked at Hex move last in the last cycle. And I think we're going to see Pulse Chain do very much the same. So with that in mind, I want to actually be able to capitalize on that. And again, go with this Ray Dalio's play of this all weather portfolio in a very active kind of way. So why base chain? So first of all, the strategy is actually from my plan. So the plan that I'd written years ago and ideas behind buying and taking profit and when to sell and how to sell and what kind of conditions to sell under and when to buy, what to buy, what kind of sectors, Basically, I had three different sectors. The reason why was in the end of the last bull market, I put everything into hex and I do feel it was a mistake. I feel like if I was more spread out or if I had things in, uh, for example, uh, stable coins, especially, it would have been a far better play than just leaving it in hex. So I feel like also towards the top of the bull market, because I was all in on hex towards the top of the bull market, I ended up just cycling everything into it. It was a big mistake because I ended up staking things and it just, it made me blind to everything else. As it was going up, I was doing a lot of different things and that was really working. But towards the end, I kind of hyper-focused on Hex and I feel like that was a mistake. So I had the idea that I don't want to be stuck in just one chain. I want to actually move across three different sectors. And the idea is that these three different sectors aren't moving in harmony with each other. They're moving different to each other. And if they're moving different to each other, it means I can cycle profits from here into here and then into here and then into here, so on and so forth. So I can grow the bag like this. So it's really just an idea whether or not it works out. I have no idea if I had stuck to my original plan. So my original plan was one of the sectors is the Pulse Chain ecosystem. The other sector was AI and gaming. And the other sector was core coins like uh, Bitcoin, fork of Bitcoins, Ethereum's and uh, other layer ones. I have my core of Bitcoin in Bitmobic. That's a fork of Bitcoin. So I have a very good percentage in that. I've got about probably about one third of my portfolio in that. But I'm very weighted into Pulse Chain. And the reason why was because Pulse Chain was so low for so long. And then I discovered the Atropa ecosystem. So I really wanted to keep putting whatever funds that I had into those lows. What I didn't know is that the bull market was going to start so quick. So I picked up a few gaming tokens, but not enough AI tokens. So I have some funds now. And I was going to put them into AI tokens, but 
it's already done like a 10 to 15 X across the board. So until I see like a big, big dip, I don't really want to get into it. So it could keep running and I could miss out, but that's okay. There's always other opportunities. So this is really about adjusting to the, to the world. And that's also part of my strategy, being in flow with the world, reading the signs and adjusting to the world. So again, why base chain is the main reason is is because I'm looking for ways to build up my long term plays on pulse chain. Pulse chain is going to be my home. I'm going to be there until the chain dies. I love it, and I love the community. I've made some really nice connections there. I really love the people there, the different communities that I'm a part of. So that is my long term chain. But the reason why it's my long term chain as well is because of the differentiating factor in pulse chain that I see with liquidity bonding. And it's something that I do not see in any other chain. I haven't seen it in, I, I just literally haven't seen it in any other chain. The way that things are liquidity bonded, not just in a linear way. In other words, not just, so everything's, okay. So for example, everything is just connected to Solana and then they pump and then it pulls up Solana as well. So that's how they're liquidity bonded. But then if they drop, it pulls down Solana or if Solana drops, it pulls down all the tokens that it's connected to. With Pulse Chain, it's an ecosystem. It's actually an ecosystem of tokens that are interconnected. I find that a very, very fascinating concept and one of the only, only blockchains that actually has that concept. So that's why I believe that it can be a long-term play where it might, we might not get those wild 10,000 Xs. I think we still can with certain particular tokens, but across the board, I think it's going to steadily move up across the board, which is something that I really am mega bullish on pulse chain for so that's why i want pulse chain to be my long-term play so again why base chain so let's get back into it so why base chain i'm seeing signs of base chain growing everywhere so i'm seeing my twitter start to come up with base chain tweets which is very interesting because i have a lot of people in bitmobic and pulse chain and now i'm starting to see things about base chain which is very interesting i'm seeing telegram chat start to start to whisper about base chain i'm seeing it in youtube so the the wind kind of seems to be blowing in that direction and i'm actually going to show you evidence to support that there was one tweet that i saw that showed a lot of funds were cycling out of solana and into base chain which that was really was like ah oh, this is my wake up moment but unfortunately i i i didn't bookmark that tweet and i can't find it but it was one of the key reasons why I started to do this deep dive. So I'm also seeing at the same time, whispers of people getting sick of Solana. They're getting sick of pump and dumps and not being able to make any money. And it's just a VC chain and VCs are making all the money and everybody is just exit liquidity. I'm seeing a lot of whispers of people getting sick of it. And then when I saw that tweet of people moving out of Solana onto base chain, ah, that really piqued my curiosity. Also, my own mind. So reflecting on my own mind, I'm actually feeling a lot of FOMO that Solana is moving a lot. And I actually went on there today to just, just to see what it's all about. And to be honest, I was really shocked. I thought Solana was quite cheap, but I think I put, let's, I think it basically, I think I lost like by the time I transferred it into the, into Radium, I think I ended up losing about, I think it was about 10% on fees and yeah slippage it, it was really it was really quite surprising even when i reduced even when i did what i do with the tropa and i made like really small buys the slippage was still quite high so i was really quite surprised at the level of fees so i thought solana was supposed to be like this cheap innovative chain but maybe maybe because i'm a noob and i'm radium's not the place to be i have no idea i literally just tried it today so also, there's this, there's, there's me, there's me that's like, I want to get into this. And I am the person where if you look at, I mean, the market psychology, if you look at the market psychology charts, I'm, I was the, I wouldn't say hater of Solana, but I didn't like the principles of Solana that it's just v, VC pump and dumps. But you know what? They're the ones that are making all the money. And now I'm getting that FOMO and it's like, ah, I am now that kind of, I'm at the, I'm, I'm, I'm the parabola movement i'm not the early guys i'm the guys that have the haters turned positive so really it's like ah solana's really looking like it's getting too late in a way but it probably isn't it's still probably got a long way to go but nevertheless i still want to look for ground opportunities rather than things that are really like 
it's the same principle as the AI, which is really moved. I want to look for things that are more starting to move rather than they're like halfway through their mega moves because you really never know when it's going to end. The other reason why base chain for me is VCs are what actually create the pump and dumps. So obviously I can either have that negative mindset and say, oh, the VCs are just pumping and dumping and it's not a good thing. And this is why I'm saying like, this is not financial advice. Don't invest in it. I might not even end up doing this. This is literally just me starting to look at base chain. So, but the VCs are the things that actually make the pumps. That's the thing. That's the thing when I'm, when I'm looking at how pulse chain is moving, it's the big money, which makes things move. You need that big money to create the excitement, to get the, to get the retail in there, to create the parabolic runs. At the moment, it's not really happening. There is no big money. There's only, I mean, all we've seen is just like one or two whales making some big moves and everyone's getting excited, but you need those VCs. Whether we like it or not, the VCs are needed. So the thesis with Coinbase, uh, the thesis with base chain is that it's affiliated. It's, it's the Coinbase chain. So because it's the Coinbase chain and Coinbase is, it's a public company. For me, it's like, ah, it's going to be a comfortable playground for VCs to move to. They also might be getting bored of Solana. So with that in mind, I'm thinking base chain could be the perfect place to start to capitalize on this potential next wave. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is now some of this evidence. So, oops, so I'll go back to share screen and I'll show some of this evidence here. Okay, so... Now some of this evidence. So this is DeFi Llama. Ah, oh, boy, my did my it's my computer's gone mega slow for some reason. I think it's because I got so many tabs open. So I've got here compare chain, Solana, base, pulse chain for the total value locked up. So as you can see, I mean Solana, Solana's dominating. Solana at the moment is apparently dominating even Ethereum. So uh Solana's like the king at the moment whether we like it or not. And yes, this is a fake metric in the way that there's a lot of bot trading. So it's artificial pumping, but it's still, it's still bringing attention to the chain. This is the thing. So it's all about, it doesn't really matter. I mean, blockchain, it doesn't really matter about the truth. The cryptocurrency doesn't matter about the truth. It's really just like people, like DeFi is just degenerate finance like it's just wherever i can get my degenerate quick gains that's what people are interested in they're not really interested in the truth it's not about the utility it's not about what's going to work it's not really about any of that it's just what what can make the quick gains. so solana as we can see it's been steadily rising and yes of course the chain has exploded recently in the last few months so at the moment it's got over four billion dollars in total value locked up now if you look at I'm just going to use base here. So base stayed steady around the 300 million. Then it started rising to 400 million, 400 million, and it stayed 400 million for a good. So the three to 400 million from December, January, all through January. So still through January, 400 million, February, 400 million, 400 million. Now it's starting to pick up. So February, it's starting to pick up 500. Now it's starting to pick up 600 and it's up to almost 800. So it's really starting to pick up in this last month. So in this last month, in, in the month of, well, within the last month. So basically for, for two months, it was basically steady at 400. Now it's really starting to pick up. So I've seen this evidence here. I've seen that tweet and I'm looking at Pulse Chain as well, comparing Pulse Chain. Go Pulse Chain. She's, she's chugging along, my, our little baby girl. But obviously at the moment, Pulse Chain's TVL is dipping. Okay. That's also, wow, excellent. So money's moving out of the chain and it's moving elsewhere. So in that sense, this is like whales moving out of the chain. So I want to basically capitalize on these opportunities. I'm seeing a peak here. I'm seeing a rise up. Can I zoom in on this? I think I can. So let me just zoom in here so we can make it very clear. Good old DeFi Llama is nice and slow. All right, so let's zoom in. Oh, it's not so apparent when you zoom in so close, is it? It looks a lot better. On, on the way out. But in any case, you can start to see this rise. And this is what we want to see. So if money is starting to, now we've seen like a peak here in Solana and it's starting to steadily drop off. So this is also, I mean, it was rise, 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 high, steadily dropping off. So if this trend continues, is that is that liquidity going to flow into base chain? That's essentially what my thesis is. 
So now I'll skip past this. So obviously, okay, so first of all, looking at Solana again, so I can compare Solana to base chain. Solana, FDV. So I've just basically uh, categorized it by the fully diluted valuation. There's things in here in the billions. So 12 billion, 2 billion, 1 billion book of meme. I mean, can you believe it? Slurf, Slurf, basically they messed up and they're still in the hundreds of millions. It's, it's unbelievable. Crypto is unbelievable. Why? Because it was being spoken about. And even myself, because it was being spoken about, my mind gets curious. It's like, oh, what is this slurp? Can I actually capitalize on it? It's just the attention that it's that it brings to people's eyes. It went viral. I think it was two days ago when everybody found out that this guy basically sent out this tweet that he stuffed up and he burnt all the liquidity and all that money was lost. And it brings attention. Everybody's talking about it. And because everybody's talking about it, I mean, Somi's done hundreds of videos of this. Rao Pal talks about this. Cryptocurrency is about network effects. So it's really about where the attention is. So where the attention is, where the network is, that's where I want to be so I can be part of the party. If I'm not part of the party, then I'm not making any gains. That's really what cryptocurrency is all about. So with that, I find it very interesting that with Solana, we have these things that are in the billions, hundreds of millions, many in the hundreds of millions, tens of millions. So I'm not saying these can't go up further. These are probably likely going to continue to go because we're still not in the peak of the bull market. We haven't even we haven't even crossed the halvening yet. So these things will still go crazy. But you've got things here in the millions, in the millions, in the millions, hundreds of thousands. So this is the top on Dex Screener. So when I do this, I'll go to DexScreener.com forward slash Solana. Now comparing that to Base Chain, I've done the same thing with Base. And if you look at Base, the gaps that I see here. Are huge. So we've got this one token, Aero, which is not even a billion market cap yet, fully diluted valuation. It's 700, 773. Okay. So, oh, that's interesting. Then the next drop down is half of that. So then we have half of that. And there's only a few. There's like, th there's, well, really, they're all the same. So this is the Brett token. And when I started to look at uh, base chain, Brett was the first thing that popped up. So Brett is like there. I think Brett is. <laughs> Brett. I think Brett is the brother of Peppy. I think that's why. I think that's what it is. And then Toshi. So Toshi. So these haven't got to, I mean, but they're hundreds of millions, right? They're hundreds of millions. The market caps are hundreds of millions. You don't see these kinds of numbers on Pulse Chain yet. Then we have just a few hundreds of millions. And then the rest is tens of millions. And then just a few millions. And then below that, it goes into the hundreds of thousands. So, ah, this is really opportunity. So what I started to do here is one of my friends, Ut Utini, Vigilante Crypto, he told me to start looking at things at the on the five minutes. So he's actually been, he did this with Sol like a few weeks ago, Solana, and he picked up like a 74X. He just basically lottery tickets, picked up a set 64X, uh, picked up like some big runners and some things that obviously dump. But all you need is that one big runner out of, if you put 10 in and you get that one that does 50X, then hey, you've, you've made gains, even if all the other nine are losers. So basically he said, look at this, look at the market cap. And so this is what I started to do. So I started to look at the market cap. Now, as I continue this, I want to be very clear, full credit to Moon King. So a lot of this thinking around memes is associated with Moon King. And I don't want to give away too many of his secrets with the law of meme coins. He had that video out there for a long time. Um, and I hope I'm not breaching anything and I hope I hope he's okay with me sharing this information. But some of this is from his way of thinking about meme coins and some of the things that I picked up there. So I'm going to share some of those things that I picked up there and the way that I'm actually looking at this chain from now just to see how it moves. So at the moment, I'm just researching. I'm in the research stage because honestly, my FOMO, I, I don't want to act on that FOMO. My FOMO was really going up. My gut, the tension in my gut. I'm like, no, I'm not buying anything. I'm not doing this because this is the bad mindset to buy with. Even if you make a winner, eventually if you keep if you keep sticking with that habit of that feeling, like you're going to end up losing because yes, you can make a game one time, but more more often than not, you're going to lose with that mindset. And that's that's been the the history of my of my investing life is investing and trading with that 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 kind of like FOMO gut. And I've always lost. I've lost tens of thousands of dollars with that and I'm not 
I refuse to do that. Sometimes, sometimes it's like so strong. And I even wonder, it's like, you know, when we saw the OA by, um, by the Ethereum towards the top, it's like, oh, I wonder if that, I wonder if there was a bit of that FOMO there. So I think it still happens to all of us. That's a thing. It doesn't matter how good you are, but it's really about managing it and controlling it and not letting it be a habit because those are the guys that always lose. And I don't want to be that. I want to really be very delicate about my mindset and sharing if this mindset is actually going to work. So, okay. Because I'm a very big proponent that mindset is going to be the main thing that's going to make us successful in investing. Some people have criticized me for this and said, meditation has got nothing to do with uh, investing, but I, I disagree. I, I fully disagree as a matter of fact, because since I've been meditating, my portfolio has gone from, and my bank account has gone from basically a stagnant, a few thousand dollars to now hundreds of thousands in my cryptocurrency portfolio. So I'm, I'm very confident in this idea of meditation and mindset actually being the key to making money. It's the key in everything. Why would it not also be the key in investing? It makes no sense. So first of all, another piece of evidence that I'm looking at, base. So base DEX. So if you have a look at this, so this is, the, this is, the, this is like the pulse X of base. So it had, when it launched, base launch, and it had this big peak here. Let's see. Let's actually see how much that did. So, okay, it did. It did some X's. Okay, now it was dead. I mean, if we oh, actually, if we put it on log, it's probably going to be a little bit more. Okay, it's a. It tells a little bit of a different story with log, but not log. That's really the story that I want to see. It's still a very similar story with with or without log. So, uh, essentially, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this here. And one here. So this is where we started to see that it that it really started to just stagnate. So from October until March, until about mid-March. So within the last few days, now we've seen base. So now if I go to log, it's kind of telling the same story. It's just down, it's like it's dead. Now it's come to life. Now it has come to life. And we're seeing gains we're seeing big gains so you know we're seeing 40x here upwards of what oh, geez 65x from the bottoms i mean if you go from the very bottoms there's people who've made yeah there's people who've made some serious gains almost 100x okay so because this is like the pulse x this is like the dex this is the official dex for base chain this is the native base dex this rise here is again telling me ah attention is moving to base chain it was dead i mean it wasn't dead sorry it, it went up and then it started to die but now the attention is coming then i'm seeing the other metrics ah this could be a potential play so what have i started to do so i followed along with what with what utini said vigilante crypto and he basically told me go to your five minutes and just look for the biggest gainers in the five minutes and look at their market caps. So this is what I did. I did this this morning and I just opened up a whole bunch of different tokens, but it's not necessarily. So this is, okay, so BBB was one of them. And all I'm doing now is just having a look at them. So what have I done? I'm really trying to adopt Moon King's mindset of the law of mean coins. So one of his things that he always looks for is narratives. He looks for websites. He looks for the following so that's kind of what I'm starting to do now. So I've, I've opened up a whole bunch of different tokens. So BBB is just one of them. I've had a look at the, the website. Mm, okay, interesting. This actually looks like a half decent website. So, oh gosh, I shouldn't know this, but I do. And I think everybody knows this. So, <laughs> all right. So looking at the Twitter, okay, the Twitter's, it's, it's new, okay, so it's new, and I want to see how these new tokens grow, and which ones are actually growing, and why are they actually growing, then I looked at this one, so, that, I mean, even if it just comes down to the name, so this is weirdo, so I'm seeing this kind of like, this, this uh, caricature kind of figure really pop up a lot, so I'll go to the four hour, this caricature kind of guy pop up a lot with all the meme scene, I'm seeing it all over Twitter, so okay, let's actually have a look at this, so weirdo, and again, I looked at the website 
and the website looks half decent. Okay, so I'll keep my eye on this. So I've just got these open so I can keep my eye on them over the next few weeks, over the next few days, few weeks. And us and I probably will start to dabble in a in a few days' time. I will actually produce a how to buy like a how to buy on base chain once I actually do it myself. Um, but I'm just going to be looking at it for the next few days, probably for a week or so. Then here's another one. So coin, coin is another one that did. It was already really taking off. So I had a look at this one. So, okay, it it kind of peaked, It but it's it looks like it's still got some life in it. So interesting. Then I looked at the website. What does a website look like? And the reason why I think the website is very important. So the website actually tells me who's behind it. And this is just a theory. This is just a theory. This is not, this is not, um, this is not a fact. This is just my thinking behind it. But when I was looking at Solana and I'm looking at the Solana memes, the, the websites are quality, which means that there's money behind it that's actually producing these websites. If it's a crappy website, it means that there's not money behind it. And if there's not money behind it, then there's less of a chance of a pump. But if it's got money behind it, then it's going to be a good website. And it's going to have some of that money that actually produced that website and was willing to invest in a quality website that's actually going to be flowing into that. So that's kind of my thinking around the, the quality of a website is really, really important. So I'm having a look at this and it's like, okay, the website's pretty crap, to be honest. I mean, it's very basic, not very well put together. Um, now, here's another example. So again, just trying to get a, a different range of things, basement dweller. So this weirdo had the narrative of the, the meme, that kind of a meme. So, okay, that's interesting. Then you got this basement dweller. I don't really know what the narrative is there for Basement Dweller. Where's Basement Dweller? And then the Basement Dweller website really, really stinks. But maybe this is part of it, but it just looks like, it looks like, I mean, yeah, I, whoever's listening to this and if they are, maybe they specifically did it like this, but I mean, I'm not a web designer, but I could do a better, if, if I can do a better job, that's kind of my metric for the, the kind of caliber of, money that's gone behind the chain so it kind of puts me off a bit and you know if you look at the chart the chart really is not looking too healthy it could have just been a very quick pump and dump here's another one jeet so jeet is like i mean jeet is jeet, jeet is popular i mean i was looking at this this morning so i was looking at this when it was down here at this dip and i contemplated and I probably well, there you go. I could have had a 3x, but again, I like to do my research first, and I don't I don't want to be in that. But again, this Jeet also has this kind of character going on. So again, it's following that narrative. So just seeing and trying to pick these kind of narratives and trying to think like, okay, how does the moon king, how do how do the crypto kings think? How do the guys who are the goats of meme coins think? That's the kind of thinking that I want to that I want to basically saturate into my mind. So this website. Not too bad, not too bad. And it actually looks deliberately like it's supposed to be like this because of the nature of this character. So I don't mind that at all. So here's another one as well, Facebook. And I think, you know, Facebook, again, I think I've, I looked at this one because of the, the, the book of memes on Solana. And it's like, okay, this whole book thing, let's actually have a look at this. So the Facebook. So again, just keeping my eyes on these different narratives just to see how they are. But the website stinks. It's like, it's so bad. It's like a 1995 website. Was there even the internet around then? But you know, it's like a dial up website. It's really, really bad. So it doesn't give me a lot of confidence in the project. Here's another one, Fink. So base Fink. So this is one that Vigilante Crypto pointed out to me, Utini. He looked at, he was looking at Fink and I know why. The website is fantastic. Look at this website, gorgeous website. It just gives you confidence in the project. So these are the things that I look out for. Um, and okay, so Brett. So Brett is basically, this is the one that's, this is 304 million market cap. So this has done some serious numbers, man. Like, look at that. It's done 292,000 from the bottom. So, or, you know, almost 300,000 from the bottom. So it's done some serious numbers. And then if you look at the website, let's have a look at this website. It is a legit website it's like shiba inu quality doge quality it's a legitimate website and it's like oh wow you know straight to where i can buy it straight to where i can go so this is i mean now the thing is the type of money 
that could have gone into this website could have been VC. It could have come after the fact, somebody that's made some serious gains. And those people who've made the serious gains want to continue to make serious gains. So they're the ones that usually adopt the energy around the community and start to grow the community and start investing in these types of things. So, but in any case, that just gives you a little bit of an understanding about what I'm thinking about, why I'm thinking about base chain. And again, the core thesis is is to rotate those funds back into my long-term players. And my long-term players are Pulse Chain and Bitmobi. So with the Atropa ecosystem at the moment where it is, I'm thinking it's going to continue to rise and I'm not in buy mode. So I, I don't really have a lot of uh, free funds. I've got some free funds and I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at potentially deploying them on base chain. I don't want to deploy them deploy them onto into a tropa PDI because it's too high at the moment. I want to wait for a big pullback to deploy those tokens. So with that, I hope that was some some good quality research for you guys and why I'm thinking about this. And hopefully, hopefully this thesis actually plays out. We'll see if this chain continues to grow. And I'm actually going to start to be dipping my toes in a week or two time, a week or two's time. So I'll keep you aligned with that so nothing else to say except for my final book reading so this particular this in this one i've picked out seven habits of highly successful people for very specific reasons so this particular one of the habits is be proactive so the quote here is look at the word responsibility response ability the ability to choose your response highly proactive people recognize that conditioning or oh, highly highly proactive people recognize that responsibility. They do not blame circumstances, conditions, or conditioning for their behavior. Their behavior is a product of their own conscious choice based on values rather than a product of their conditions based on feeling. Because we are by nature proactive, if our lives are a function of conditioning and conditions, it is because we have, by conscious decision or by default, chosen chosen to empower those things to control us so the reason why i chose that passage about proactivity very specifically because that's exactly what i'm doing so my plan was to go in ai early but that opportunity already ran away without me so i have to adjust the plan i still want to stick to the plan and be in three sectors and cycle coins between them and basically grow my bag in this way. And so I can't do that with AI at the moment. So I have to adjust. I have to be proactive. I have to look at what the world is telling me. And what the world is telling me is that the wind seems to be blowing towards, uh, the wind seems to be blowing towards base chain. So that's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in it for any philosophical reason. My philosophical reasons lie wholeheartedly with Pulse Chain. Again, I'm looking at cycling these into Pulse Chain and hopefully onboarding people into the glory of Pulse Chain. Once they actually start to participate in these pump and dump chains and actually see, hey, there's a chain where that is actually not going on, there's magic happening, maybe their eyes will open up, maybe they'll come across to Pulse Chain. So that's also part of my strategy to really help people see the beauty of Pulse Chain and how early it is. So with that, Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the episode and take care.